Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, and welcome to Prague Chattery 777. Well, I'm talking about PFM, and I've made it to their fourth studio album, Chocolate Kings, released in 1976. Uh, now this, to my ears, represents a major turning point for the band. Uh, it's definitely a snapshot of a band in a period of great change. Uh, first of all, it's the first time that PFM released an album that exclusively has an English version. Uh, there's no Italian language versions of any of the songs on uh, this album. Uh, not that I'm aware of, anyway. Uh, which is quite telling. The first three studio albums, uh, Storia Dio Minuto, Paranamico, and The Solo di Niente, um, you know, they're all, the proper versions of those albums are all uh, Italian language. Uh, the last two, Paranamico and The Solo di Niente, have photos of ghosts and the world became the world as kind of English counterparts, but not original studio albums. Uh, but the fact that they released an album that only has English lyrics and no counterpart, that's um, quite telling, you know. They're obviously really trying to reach out to their um, English-speaking audience. Uh, and, you know, who can blame who can blame them? They were, uh, they were on a roll at this point, and uh, they just want to keep that momentum going. And they also had quite a lot of success in the States. Um, they were on a show called Midnight Special, which is, you know, it, it's a... a some show that was on NBC back in the day that represented all the uh, hip and happening bands of the day. So the fact that they are on it is pretty, yeah, it's pretty special for them, I would think. Um, the other very notable thing with this album, obviously, is the uh, the addition of a new lead singer. Um, up to this point, um, the five-piece PFM, you know, the, all the musicians kind of shared vocal duties, and they could all sing well enough. They could, you know, hum a melody, and they all had a charisma of their own. Um, but adding a new singer to become a six-piece, um, someone to just handle the vocal duties exclusively, definitely focuses that charisma uh, a little bit, and it, um, it, it, it gives it a more focused sound overall. Um, uh, now, the singer, Bernardo, uh, Bernardo Lanzetti, uh, obviously was Italian, but he spent a few years living in the States, so he was quite fluent in English, and I think he writes you know, better, better English lyrics for PFM than Peter Sinfield did, uh, to be honest. <laughs> Um, hmm. Need a drink. Uh, but what, I think what the biggest thing that this singer brings is an American soul influence. He obviously likes the American soul bands. He, he sounds a lot like the family singer um, and Peter Gabriel as well, early Peter Gabriel. Uh, both of those singers, of course, were very influenced by American soul, so that's quite notable. Uh, and that gives, you know, I guess a certain Americanization to the sound. Not only does the singer bring this, but uh, the music on this album is much more jazzy, I would say. You know, the, the jazzy influence was always there right at the beginning. Um, but I think it's at this point it's starting to overtake the classical and the folk influences a little bit. Uh, which is cool, but it shows the band at this point has a different modus operandi. Um, you know, they're really trying to appeal to their American audience. Uh, I'm, you know, maybe I'm just saying that because of the big American flag on the album cover. Um, but I think, you know, musically you can tell that, you know, there, there is, I guess, an Americanization to their sound. Um, but it's all still very, very good music, you know, it, even though it's different to an album like Piranamico slash Photos of Ghosts. Um, you know, if you, if you like prog and you like cool playing and musicianship and whatnot, it's got, you know, all of those, all of those ingredients are, um, you know, definitely within the chocolate, uh, of the, uh, album cover. I think the biggest question, you know, with regard to this album is, you know, is this PFM selling out? You know, obviously they're trying to appeal to a specific audience, I think, at this point. Um, but... You know, it's not really commercial music. I, I, you know, listening to this, I wouldn't think of it as being commercial. Um, you know, it's 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 still melodic, but there's nothing really poppy about it. And again, you know, it, it all it all depends on you know the day and age as well. You know, this, the, you know, '76 prog was still you know kind of a big thing, right? So maybe this was commercial, but um, I don't know. At the end of the day, the music is really really cool, and that's um, and that's what it's all about. But in addition, on on the whole, in addition to um, um. You know the jazz, the extra jazzy influence. You know, going deeper into the fusion influence, even more so than what was on the previous album, where they kind of flirted with it a little bit. Um, La Sola di Niente, as I mentioned in the previous video, it, it lands perfectly between you know the early prog stuff and the the fusion stuff. This is maybe a little bit more towards the fusion, but um, it, it's still really really cool. The, the one of the things is that is the keyboard dominates a little bit more. The earlier albums, I think they had a, a much greater economy of sound. I think I mentioned in another in another video that I did how what I like about PFM is how it's never you know 
dominated by any particular instrument. I think the keyboards are a little more dominant on here. Um, but you know, that's that, that's fine, you know, that's just the direction that they were going in, right? Um, there was one more thing that I was going to say. Oh, in, in terms of the spirit of the of the album, I think you could argue that it's a little bit more focused on the playing than it is on the songs. Um, you know, the early albums, there's definitely, you know, they're, they're focused on telling stories and, you know, the illustrating stories and whatnot, where now it's just, you know, check out these riffs and these hyper-fast melodies. Uh, so even though it's more about the playing, it's still melodic, but it's, you know, that that's, that's the fusion influence, I guess. Anyway, one more sip of water, and then I'm going to talk about the tracks. Hmm. I'm talking a lot today. So, side one opens with From Under. Uh, now this is a great track, actually. It, it, on the whole, it kind of reminds me a little bit of a Yes sort of a thing. Um, but again, you know, maybe controversial. I think it's a bit better than Yes. Um, the, the opening notes, very, you hear that fusion style right away, that hyper-fast melody. And the big, long, you know, kind of break where you just get that droning, that keyboard line, or that keyboard sound that drones through, and then another fast line. And uh, it's a, it's a kind of a nice steady build in a lot of ways. Um, it still has that proggy vibe though with the, that ascending um, keyboard. You know that that's kind of that, that's got that classical sort of influence, but uh, still played with you know traditional rock instruments or whatever. But uh, yeah, it, it's 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 a great track, and a bit, you know it has a couple of you know ups and downs towards it as as it goes. You know, lots of dynamic parts, but the end is very very high energy. It's great display of the guitar at the end with that really fast melody, um, hyper picked. It's 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 a, it's a great track. Um, moving on to track two, we get Harlequin. Now this to me I think is probably the best one on the album. Uh, I I really really like it anyways. Um, Opens with a great display of the acoustic guitar. Again, it's it, it has elements of that early folky, ethereal, you know, arpeggiated type, that kind of style, uh, but it's just jazzier. I mean, it's just the way that the 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 drumming and the the bass kind of goes underneath it. But it definitely has a jazzier vibe than the earlier stuff. Uh, but it's a great, great showcase for that uh, acoustic guitar. It's very, very, very nice. And then the big middle section, uh, the hyperactive middle section with those, um, you know, that big keyboard riff. That's that's just fantastic. You, you can probably hear some of the the ELP influence coming through a little bit, but uh, just just very, very energetic and uh, in your face kind of playing. And then it wraps its way up towards the end. We go back to the acoustic stuff and. Um, yeah, it's a fantastic track. Very, very engaging. Easy to, you know, get into, I guess. Uh, and then we uh, make our way up to track three, the title track, Chocolate Kings. Uh, now this is kind of in, in the, you know, the, the mind frame of uh, a festa or celebration. Uh, the kind of fast rock boogie sort of a thing. Uh, the intro and the outro, they kind of almost remind me a little bit of um, late 70s Gentle Giant. But again, this is this is released before... I guess that style of Gentle Giant was around, so that's notable and interesting. Uh, but it's a it's a good um, you know engaging boogie again, very very keyboard dominated, lots of keyboards on that track. But um, yeah, it's a good uh, fast paced rock shuffle with uh, you know again the, you really hear the charisma of the lead singer on here as well. Um, you know he, he, the the singer definitely does a lot to um, to add to that. I think the, the vocals are much better on this album, uh, arguably. Uh, but yeah, Chocolate King's title track, good little track. Definitely, definitely, you know, smaller and uh, easier to digest than the first two tracks, you know, more compact, but um, still a great track. You know, maybe the poppier one of the album. Uh, then we're going to flip the album over to get to track four, side, uh, five, uh, track four, side, side two, track one. Come on, tongue twisted, my, my voice is not working at the moment. Uh, the song is Out of the Roundabout. Uh, now this is a great track. I think this is uh, probably a lot of people's favorite on the on the album. Um, great showcase for the acoustic guitar once again. Uh, the the keyboards kind of take a back seat on this track to a certain extent. They still do you know lots of you know cool little solo riffs and whatnot. But you know, at least my ears zone in on uh, the acoustic guitar. Um, very much in the in the vein of the earlier albums, I think. Um, but not quite as good, you know. I think I think a track like uh, the title track, "Photos of Ghosts," uh, the song is, uh, is is probably better in in terms of like a subdued track. Because out of the roundabout, doesn't really it doesn't have a big heavy rock section or a big you know 
mad in a section or anything. It is, you know, generally quite toned down. Although it is an epic, you know, it's it's a solid eight minutes long. Um, but it's a, it's a it's a great track. I love I love the 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 weird the weird syncopated rhythm. You know, out of the roundabout. Dun, 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 dun. It's, uh, it's, it's it's brilliant stuff, and he is just a fantastic guitar player, and the, that that classical finger pick style, you know, he's uh, there's a lot of information coming out of those fingers uh, when when you listen to it. It's fantastic, definitely uh, one of my favorites on the album. You know, it's probably for me it's Harlequin and Out of the Roundabout uh, that I would go to. Uh, and then we get to um, song number two, track two of side two, uh, track five overall, Paper Charms, the uh, finale of the album. Uh, now this one, you know, it kind it, it leaves me a little, a little, it falls flat a little bit for me for whatever reason. Um, you know, it, to me, it's it's very similar to From Under, I guess. Um, you know, there are kind of class, there there is the kind of classical melody that comes in, but it's of all the tracks on here, it feels like the most like you know an album track. All of the all of the songs kind of have a different um, vibe, except for the first two tracks. And my 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 ears like the first track a little bit more. Uh, maybe Paper Charms will grow on me a little bit more, but, uh, you know, maybe not, there's nothing wrong with it, obviously, but, um, not one of my favorites on the album. I think generally I would say it's probably my least favorite on the album, but it's still good, of course. Why not? Why not admit that? <laughs> so, uh, there, that's, I think I've, I've rambled on just about long enough. Uh, Chocolate Kings, very, very good album, not too bad. Definitely t leaning more towards the fusion than the prog, and that was something that they developed even further on the next album, Jet Lag. Uh, which I'm going to be talking about next time, so uh, stay tuned for that. If you enjoyed my inco my incoherent rambling, uh, don't forget to subscribe, uh, comment, like, all that fun stuff. Thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned for um, probably the last PFM video for a while. Anyway, I'll be talking about jet lag, as I said. Stay tuned for that. Thank you very much. You will see me in the future. Goodbye.